Hey there, I'm Josh, and today I'm going to be just joshing around building a coffee table that converts into two storage benches. For this project, I used the lumber listed here, along with all the finishing products shown here. And the whole thing took me around five hours from start to finish. For a while now, we've been wanting to have a coffee table in our family room. But at the same time, we didn't really want to fully sacrifice the large open area where our kids are always playing. And also, my daughter has been after me for a while to make a nice little sitting area by the window where she can sit and read her books. So one day, my daughter casually says, you know, it'd be kind of cool to have a coffee table that would split apart into benches that you could put by the window. Now that was a good idea. So, that's what I'm doing. So far, what you've seen me do is break down the plywood using the table saw and a circular saw. And now I'm using the miter saw to cut down all of my dimensional lumber. I'm really loving everything about this miter saw, by the way. Except for one thing, that is. The dust collection leaves a lot to be desired. I'm gonna have to make an addition to help aid in the dust collection, because this current setup just isn't cutting it. Anywho, the rest of the saw works really well and I was able to blow through all these dimensional cuts pretty quickly. Next, I set up the pocket hole jig and went to work on drilling all of the corresponding pocket holes. This jig always works really well to help give me consistent, accurate results every time. One of these days, I'm gonna have to splurge to get the little dust collector attachment for this jig, but for now, my little makeshift shop vac hose clamp contraption does a good enough job. Yeesh, try to say that three times fast. Anywho, I went ahead and used some 150 grit paper to sand all of the lumber in its current form. By the way, did I mention that the top of this table saw makes a great work surface? Because it does. Did I also mention that my new GLaDOS inspired camera mount works really well? Because it does! And that's where you're seeing me from right now. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, then after this video is over, go back and watch my last video, and all your questions will be answered. Oh, re really just the one. What I'm doing now is using my jigsaw to cut away some material from the back side of the bottom panel to accommodate the legs. Fun fact, the blade clamp for this saw has a big old crack through it. And apparently any hopes of a replacement is a fever dream, as I can't find one anywhere. Anywho, let's start assembly. The first thing I'm doing is attaching the front trim board to the top panel using a combination of glue and pocket screws. In all honesty, I probably could have gotten away just using one or the other, but since this thing will occasionally double as a seat, I figured it wouldn't hurt to beef things up a little bit using both glue and screws. I also applied some glue to the miter joint before attaching this side trim board into place. This next part required the use of an extra long clamp. Luckily, these Jorgensen clamps have interlocking joints that allow you to connect two clamps together, effectively doubling your clamp capacity. Such an awesome design feature. And after repeating the glue up on this side, I used a combination of shorter clamps and the extra long one to clamp the trim board into place before driving in the pocket screws. Once both sides were attached, I used a corner clamp to secure the miter joint and then drove in some brad nails. I then repeated the same process with the other corner, using a combination of clamps to achieve a nice clean square miter joint. And once again, driving in some brad nails. Next, I went to work on the leg assemblies. Each leg assembly consists of three boards butt jointed together. I used the countersink bit to pre-drill some holes, then lined up the top board to the leg and drilled the rest of the way through to avoid any splitting. I then attached the top board using two and a half inch screws. I repeated the same process with the other leg. Normally, I wouldn't use butt joints to assemble the legs like this. However, the way in which I'll be attaching these legs into place will remove pretty much any concern over this type of joint. I made two more identical leg assemblies and then went to work attaching them. I used the countersink bit to drill all of my holes and then started driving in all the screws. I was also careful to ensure that that back leg was perfectly square before driving in the screws. I then repeated the same process on the other end, being careful to clamp the leg assembly so it was perfectly flush with all the adjacent boards. Once this end was done, I attached the middle leg assembly into place. 
I didn't film it, but I also made a couple of cross support pieces for the back face. I had also previously drilled some pocket holes to attach these boards in place. One other thing that you can see I did is to cut a semicircle out of each support piece. And you'll see why here soon enough. Next, it was time to move on to the bottom panel. First, I positioned the shorter cross piece into place and attached it once again with pocket screws. Then, I repeated the same process with the other side. I was careful to make sure that the outer face was perfectly flush with the outside face of the legs as well. Once both of the shorter cross pieces were attached, I started to install the longer cross piece. And though it looks like I'm drilling directly into my body here, rest assured I am not. Though that wouldn't be the first time. After I used the countersink bit to drill all the holes, I drove in the screws. And this is how things were currently looking. Next, it was time to slide the bottom panel into position. To help hold it steady, I set small clamps as positioners at all four corners, and then one by one drove in all the pocket screws. While doing this, I was very careful to make sure that the top face of the panel was perfectly flush with the adjacent boards. Once the panel was secure, I installed some cross support pieces along the back face. And though once again I didn't film it, these pieces were made out of some scrap oak plywood in which I drilled a series of pocket holes. Once those pieces were in place, the assembly was complete and it was time to move on to sanding. I once again went over the entire bench with some 150 grit paper, paying close attention to every spot where the boards were joined together. I used a small amount of wood filler to fill in any spaces, cracks, or blemishes, before switching over to 240 grit paper and going over the entire bench very thoroughly. Once all the sanding was complete, so was one half of the table. Now it was time to build the other half. Oh wait a minute, I already did that. What? You didn't think I was going to make you watch all that again, did you? Hey, you remember those little semicircles that I cut out? Well, this is why. I'm adding a draw hasp on each end to connect both halves of the table together. And the semicircle cutout provides enough clearance for the mechanism to operate. When the hasp is installed correctly, the little latch provides enough tension to hold both halves together securely. Once the first hasp was installed, I repeated the same process on the other side. And after that one was installed, the assembly was complete and it was time to move on to finishing. I used pre-stained conditioner to wipe down each half of the table very thoroughly. I had very good results with this stuff the last time I used it on those shelves that I made a short time back. So I'm going to try to use it on every wood finishing project moving forward. Following along with the instructions on the label, I moved on to staining within two hours. For my desired tone, I only applied one coat of stain and then wiped off the excess. I then let the stain dry overnight before moving on to polyurethane. I combined a 50-50 mixture of polyurethane and mineral spirits to apply as a wipe on. I thickened up each subsequent coat and did some light sanding between coats. All in all, I applied three total coats to the entire body of the table and added one extra coat to the top just for that added protection. And with that, the convertible coffee table was done. I'm pretty happy with how this project turned out. I think this coffee table is a beautiful combination of form and function. And changing it up from a coffee table into storage benches is pretty quick and simple. Though I will say that both pieces are pretty hefty. I had no problem moving them around, but for my wife and kids, it's definitely going to be a two-person job. Speaking of whom, they really like how it turned out as well, especially my daughter, because now she has that nice little sitting area that she was wanting. Another thing that my wife and I really like is all of the expanded storage to help hide and store all the thousands of toys that my kids have. All in all, we're pretty happy with it. Oh, sorry about that. Well, that about does it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, because I sure enjoyed making this coffee table. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like below and subscribe, and share it with somebody. And be sure to check out some of my other stuff that's going to pop up right next to my head. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.